when it comes to conditioning, I can be pretty tough. Mainly because I know the results that can be achieved if we condition properly. Last year, um, we did two competitions. We competed in February, and before that competition, we were conditioning every week, every session for at least 10, 15 minutes. And our jump score was really, really good. It was a nine out of 10. And then we stopped conditioning so much and we're focusing on changing our routine for the next competition. And we could really see it. The score that was given to us, it was about an 8.5. And I know it's only a 0.5 difference, but it does make a big difference to where you place. Usually it's only a couple tiny little marks between first, second and third place. So when we come into training for cheer, uh, we all warm up and then we all sit in our jump pattern and we do some set exercises which are to work muscles which don't usually get worked. And each week it gets harder. So the first week we start with five reps, next week we'll do 10 reps, following week we'll do 15, all the way up until 25. We sit in a straddle position and you have one hand either side of your leg and you're raising your leg up slowly while squeezing your core keeping your toes pointed and not letting your leg roll under training's fun it's hard it's intense and I'm, I'm sweating already like it's it's good it's really good i like it and you have your hands in the middle and you do circles backwards Okay, so you do five circles backwards with both legs at the same time and then forwards again. In like the circles, then we have to sit and straddle and circle our legs like 50 times. And then Anna makes us go the other way. Have another drill where we sit in a tuck position, our stomachs are squeezed and I'll count one, two, three and on four, you'll hit a toe touch position and then you bring it back in quickly. So you go one, two, three, toe touch, one, two, three, bring it back in. And then we have conditioning for our herkies. So we sit in a herky position and then you're just lifting the leg which you kick in the herky. You have another one where you're sitting in a straddle position. You roll up for four counts and then you roll down slowly. It's really hard to do because you have to really good core strength and balance. You're trying not to lean back. And you can see it on the girls' faces that they are in agony. They're getting cramped left, right and centre, but they don't want to stop because they know if they'll stop, I'll make the whole team do it again. So I get cramped so badly in this one side and it's contracting so much and Anna makes you keep going and it's just holding there and you're like, oh! And even when you relax, it still really hurts. It's horrible. The, the hip cramps is just, Gemma was struggling with those today and I could see her pain and I knew how she was feeling because it just contracts so much. One of my favorite parts of conditioning is when we do the kick drills. So everyone stands strong, their arms are in a T motion and then they're kicking their leg up eight times and on the last one they snap back to a clean Sounds position. And we do this in silence, so everyone has to count for themselves. And if someone miscounts and they go to kick, while everybody else is in clean, then I make the whole team hold a plank for 10 seconds. If two people mess up, then they hold it for 20 seconds. If three people mess up, they hold it for 30 seconds. It's quite fun, because when people do have to hold a plank, they're all like, ah, oh, why did you do not kick? Like, weren't you counting? The team get a little bit ratty with each other, but it's all in um, good spirit. And at the end of the day, they're, they're gonna end up stronger from holding the plank. I can't do it and I can't count. So when I forget it, if you don't do the right amount of reps, then Anna makes everyone do how many a, a plank, a plank for 30 seconds. So when we're actually there doing it, they whinge like, Anna, please, can we stop? Can we get a water break? I think the team don't like conditioning, but they do. I hate conditioning. Don't tell Anna. <laughs> I think. Conditioning is something you can avoid if you're sneaky about it. There's definitely some sneaky falcons that <laughs> run away. Midway, halfway through. Yeah, take their shoes off or go to the toilet, do their hair. Yeah. Yeah, she actually did cheat today. I actually cheated today because we have Anna to count. asked what number we were on and I lied. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, we were only on like 12 and I said 14. <laughs> No. You have to set an example as captain. Because <laughs> we were ramping it up this week, you know, getting into it. <laughs> and then the next section, the jump amount stayed the same and I couldn't keep up so I got it wrong again. <laughs> and I had to do it again. I can be quite hard, I'll call people out. If I see someone not doing it, then I'll call them out. I'll let the whole team know the reason they have to repeat the drill is because that person wasn't pulling their weight. Especially because jumps are a team score. It's not an individual score. So if one person is letting the team down, that's going to reflect on everybody else's. So you could have 10 people with amazing jumps. If you've got five people not pulling their weight, then our score is going to come down. Anna, as a coach, She's quite a tough coach, like she doesn't take any crap from anyone. Training is a lot harder this year, actually. Like I thought it was going to be like the same as it was last year, but Anna's kind of up the ante. Um, everyone seems to be kind of up for like a intense training now, so hopefully the intense training will like pay off this year. We can obviously like place highly like regionals and things like that. Uh, tumbling and jumps were a bit of an issue last year for me. Uh, I've been working on jumps over summer, so hopefully that's kind of paid off. If not, then I've got to work on them some more this year and kind of get them up to scratch. As well as your core strength and your leg strength, you need to have the flexibility to hit a pretty toe touch. If you can't do it sat on the floor, then there's no way you're going to be able to do it when you're trying to jump in the air. And you're going to push together me for five seconds. So push, two, three, four, five. And then it should go up a little bit further. And then you push. And then you keep going as far as they can, okay? Making sure that their legs are staying straight and their hips are staying square, all right? And then you're going to do it on the other leg as well. Push me down. <laughs> And when we did the partner stretches, like after you've been stretched, it's quite a lot easier to kind of pull stretches and do the splits and things, like it hurts a lot less. Pick our leg up, and we're going to stretch her this way. You're using your knee to stretch her, okay? If she's good, she can put her arm through, so put it through here. And then you can keep going. Okay, so if you've got someone who's really flexible, you can stretch them like this. I think it makes people conscious of sort of whether they need to push one leg more than the other. I don't know, I think it's just hurt my back. <laughs> I think I'm... I had Joe, I had six foot four man pushing my legs around. I had to push Anna's legs around. <laughs> <laughs> so, Probably one <went> back. <laughs> I'm gonna hurt tomorrow. Yeah, I need to go get in my muscle relaxing man. Now you've seen how we condition our jumps and work our flexibility. Feel free to try any of these moves at home to see if they help you out. Next week we'll be going to a sprung floor location where we'll be practicing all of our gymnastics and tumbling moves. If you can't wait until next week you can always follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter or Snapchat. Don't forget to like and subscribe!